are going to continue with the whole armor of God. This whole armor is of absolute significance, very important in our lives. Today we shall look at the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit, which we will find in verse 17 of Ephesians 6, 17. We'll Ephes just, it's Ephesians. the second part, but we'll read the whole verse, yes. Ephesians 6, 17. Ephesians 6, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which again is the word of God. The word of God is everything to us. This sword of the Spirit is very important. This part of the armor is different from the other parts. Why? What makes it different? Because it is both an offensive weapon of attack and a weapon of defense. When we say offensive weapon, we don't mean, you don't offend me. This word where you talk, I don't like them, they vex me. Not be offense of that. Not be that kind of offense. When the disciples, the 70 disciples, will not listen to Jesus, they were grumbling in their hearts. Jesus said, ah, ah. This one, they will offend you. John 6, 61. You can write it and check it. So he knew what was happening in their hearts. And he said to them, does this offend you? Not be that offensive, now will they talk. This is an offensive weapon of attack. It is a military language. Offensive. You use it to attack. The only person when they offend Nine with the use and take attack. And that person is our adversary, the devil. Nine they vex when we they know this word of God. Nine they vex when we use the sword of the spirit against him. Good he vex him. Good he offend him. But apart from offending him, it attacks him. Praise God. So it is both an offensive weapon of attack and an offense to him. You know what make we know our papa language at all. You know what make we know. It's an offensive weapon of attack. But also, it is a weapon of defense. Praise God. Unlike the other parts, the other weapons where we don't they study. All those weapons, they defend, protect the head, the chest, the heart. Praise God. But this weapon, this sword of the spirit, we they take and they attack our enemy. That's what we must use it for. This means that while these other weapons defend and protect certain parts of the body, this one, which is the sword of the spirit, protects the whole body. Praise God. The whole man, the whole personality, it protects us as a whole. How does it do this? It restrains the devil. It resists the devil. Ordinary bad people, when they bring out that they are small thing, they show person. <laughs> Fear not the let person talk again because you don't see the weapon where he carry. Praise God. Now so, when we show the devil the weapon of the sword of the spirit, it restrains him. Listen, this one knowing papa, he know in Papa word. So it restrains the devil, it resists him. In James 4, let's look at James 4. James is straight after Hebrews. James 4. James 4. 6 and 7. Verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The verse 6 tells us, God resisted the proud. How does he do it? If a proud person, they talk to God, he doesn't even listen. He doesn't even recognize him. He doesn't even give him a chance. He has no time for him. So, 
That's what resistance means. God resists the proud, but give that grace to the humble. He goes, say, come, my picking. Come, my child. Wait till be your matter. Talk come. And they listen. And they hear you. Praise the Lord. So that will tell us what it means. In verse 7, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. When you resist somebody, you don't even recognize him. When you resist the devil, because they go up and down. You know, say you're not, the, you're not the rest. He's a restless creature. He goes up and down. So you don't take notice of him. He go try to distract you. You don't go, you don't go notice him whether they distract you or not. Nothing, no response. We are dead to his, his temptations. Dead to all his attacks. He doesn't touch us. Praise God. So, that's what it means to resist the devil. Because the sword is very quick and powerful. Let's look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4. Verse 12. Verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. This sword of the spirit, this word of truth, now they describe so. It is quick, it is living, it is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even, it pierces. If they tell you, where is your soul? You not go know, me I not know. Where is your spirit? I not go know, me I not know. You not know. But this sword of the spirit, it go penetrate. It defeat separate soul from spirit. How? We cannot describe it. It they penetrate joints and marrow. We know marrow, that thing where they suck for chicken leg or bone. Nine be marrow. But the thing will join one bone to another. We don't, we, don't, we, we, we don't know what it is. This sword, they penetrate. And they go even discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's amazing what God can do. How does it do this? It, because it is an offensive weapon, it, go, it, it goes in to attack. Nowhere where enough it penetrates. If it can penetrate between soul and spirit, nowhere where enough it penetrates. The, the word of God, the sword of the spirit. When the devil is held back by the sword of the spirit, by this word of truth, he will have no choice than to leave us for a season. He just goes, finds his way. The nearest landing spot, he will just find and find a way. Wakago. Praise the Lord. That is, if we use it often, all the time, if we use it against the devil, he will just have no choice. If we use it, how did Jesus use it? Let's look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. Chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. Verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He answered and well. He said, I know my papa language. I know my papa commandment. He said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Lord. So, now the word of God, they keep us. Whenever we they pray, make we thank God, thank God for preserving our lives. It is not the food where we eat they keep us. Not be emo. People they, they they stay without. Jesus Christ stayed without food for forty days. He was drinking only water. He survived it. Praise God. So now so he take finisher. He come again and notice that the, the Bible is reported here as the tempter. The tempter, all he does all his life is to tempt people. 
You go tempt you with what you, that thing where you like, that thing where you they desire, that thing where you want. You go they tempt you. Make your long throat for long more. We must resist his temptation. In verse 5, let's, let's read verse six, five. Yeah, 5, 6, and 7, please. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Praise the Lord. He answer him direct. Wait till you they talk. You want me to tempt my father. You cannot even tell me what to do, let alone control me into sin. So that is how Jesus Christ conquered him. He knew the word, he knew the right word to apply to this very situation. Verses 8 to 11. Verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil levered him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The devil levered him. He don't say, say no way for this man. There is no way, no one way bring Way not take the word of the papatic finisher. Let's look at Luke, the book of Luke 4. Luke 4. So that it will be clear, not just say he liver. Luke 4, verse 13. Verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. He left him for a season. He must go. Once we know which word, which sword to use to, to hit him, he can't stay. So it is very important. It's not, it's not enough to know the word of God. It's, a, it's important to know how to apply it. If you read them well, you will see how Jesus apply them. We must be skilled in the use of this sword by having spiritual understanding of the scripture of truth. So the purpose of studying scripture, when they go to tell us, make we they study scripture, make we they study the word of God, is not to show off, to show people, say we know the Bible, no. To show how clever you are, to be able to uh, uh, pass all the quiz, no, not, not that. It is to show ourselves a, a more serious matter, to show ourselves approved unto God. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy 2. 2 verse 15. Verse 15. Study to show thyself and prove unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided his word of truth. A workman, we are all workmen. Two things, we must be a workman approved unto God, not unto man. Because now God get the work where we, would, where we won't use in, in sword, take do. Approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. You must know this word, now for this. This word, now. that's the important thing. Once you know the word, of God, you go now know how to apply it rightly, correctly. The devil thought that if he distorts, if he rests, if he twists the scripture, that Jesus will not be able to fight him back. The devil rested the scripture, he twisted it by adding at any time, which is not in Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Let's look at Psalm 91, verse 12. Psalm 91, verse 12. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Finish the original word where God talk. He not add at any time. The word lest means in case. In verse 12 of Psalm 91. Bear thee up in their, arm, in their hands, lest, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Means in case, by chance, you accidentally, not deliberately, dash your foot against a stone. Not that you will cast yourself down because uh, I, be, I, be, I, be, I believe in Jesus. Because Jesus is the Son of God. He should fall down, jump down. No, that is not what it, it means. If you do that, it will be tempting God. So that's why Jesus answered him in that uh, Matthew 4. He said, he has given the angels charge over you, lest at any time, to hold you up, lest at any time. Jesus answered in verse 7 of Matthew 4, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It just goes straight. He said, now, now tempt, you want me to commit sin, but it's not possible. I know the commandment of God. He says, I should not tempt the Lord. My God, I cannot do it. It is a sin. He didn't go into the details, begin to argue with him, whether or not less at any time or less there. He not get time for that. He just tell and say, you want me to tempt my God. I will not do it. Christ refused to do it. Satan is always, as we have seen since we started this study, if they add, if they subtract, to mislead those that are gullible, we not know anything, the simple-hearted, the simple-minded, the ignorant. That's what he thought he could do with Jesus. He just can't size them, can't wear them. But Jesus knew his responsibility was to, he must identify the particular scripture that is applicable in, his, in every situation. He knew. So too, we must know. We must identify which scripture will work in our particular temptation that we are facing. Praise God. So, that is what it means to rightly divide the truth. Rightly divide the word of truth. That's what it means. The one where you go to, the thing where you go tell your, your Pekin, not being you go tell your husband. The thing where you go take answer your neighbor, not being you go take answer your teacher. That's so. So we must know the word that will fit in to the different situations. Because God don't tell you, say you go tread on scorpions and serpents, and over all the power of the enemy. So you go just go, stand for road. Uh, trailer, they come. They come. I go show you. You can't do that. You are tempting God. Another example where Satan, they try, they do. So especially women. He go make women believe, say, since you have long hair, that is your covering. You don't need to cover your head or your hair while praying or while prophesying. In spite of the fact that in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 4 and 5. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonored her head, for that is even all one, as if she were shaven. We must, women must cover their hair. And you can't cover your hair without covering your head. Now the two, they go together. The hair is upon the head. Remember that before the fall of man, man was naked. Woman had long hair. Man and woman were naked. They were both naked, but they were not ashamed. We will find that in Genesis 2. Genesis 2, 25. Genesis 2. 25. 
the last 20, 25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. There was nothing to make them ashamed. Now sin come bring this one. First Corinthians 11, 3 to 7. First Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I would, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one, as if she were shaving. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shown. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shown or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not cover his head, for as much as he is the image of image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. The woman is the glory of the man. She must cover her head. Not every man who your own husband, those that are married. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. Genesis 2. Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of God, of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Praise God. Now, when the devil came, Eve did not know that this is where Satan will hit. She didn't know. That's why we must be careful not to separate the word of truth from the spirit of truth. Because it is, it is the spirit of truth that wrote this Bible. Second Peter 1.21. Second Peter 1. Second Peter 1 verse 21. Maybe we should read 20 and 21, please. Verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Mm -hmm. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men of God spake and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, you, we cannot have different interpretations. The Holy Spirit, that's why we must have the Holy Spirit. We must ask God for the Holy Spirit to guide us, to teach us the, the word so that we'll be approved of God. But when he met Eve, Eve fell into his trap. Eve did not, either he, she was not taught well by her husband or she didn't learn well. Genesis 3, 2 and 3. Genesis 3. Verse 2. I think we should, we said, should, sorry, I think we should read one first to know what she's one. responding to, yes. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. He don't add. She was caught on her words. Not be the same way God tell him, tell in husband, now he talk. He go add, neither shall you touch it. Which is not in what God said in chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. As soon as... Satan began to attack. The first thing he attacked is the word of God, the word of truth. Satan now started by questioning God's word, and in defense, Eve was in trouble. So, it is important for us to know our father's word, his voice. When he is talking, we should be able to know. When another voice enters, we should be able to know. 
Ephesians, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Verse 15. Verse 15. And your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Which kind of shoes we must wear? Our feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This gospel, they bring peace between man and God, between us and God, between man and man. This gospel. So we must wear that shoe. The shoe where we go wear, now the preparation of the gospel of peace. That shoe where they give us peace with God, peace with one another. Not the shoe where they, they buy for market too. Now shoe, spiritual shoe, where it go help you to stand firm, to have steadfastness in your mind, steady mind that will enable you to fight any battle with the assurance of victory. Because the battle is not yours, the battle is the Lord's. Now who get battle now and go prepare the plan for the battle? The battle is not our own. So if we go to Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 20. Second Chronicles 20. Mm -hmm. Let's read 15 and 16. Verse 15. And he said, Hearken ye, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jero. Now you get battle. Person will get back to know where the enemy is. Know which day you go move. Know which time you go move. Know where you go meet them. So, when God sent his, his uh, servant to tell Jehoshaphat, say, This is how you will now go fight this battle. Let's look at verse 22. Second Chronicles 20 22. Yes. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir teamed up to fight the people of God. Then ready come from their house, then prepare come. But when the children, when God don't tell the people, say not be by fasting, not be by praying, I don't hear. Now me, leave the battle in my hands. I will do what I need to do. I will finish these enemies for you. I know where they are passing, the road where they pass, I know. When they go past, I know. Listen to my servants and you will get them, finish them. Jehoshaphat believed and every one of them obeyed. The Holy Spirit inspired him. This is the time to praise God. He has fought the battle. For you to know the secret of the enemy, the battle is won. So, they obey him, then begin sing, then begin praise God. Now that time, nine God set ambushments against Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. Three people, three nations were ready, come, united, come. At this point, they were no longer united. May they come unite. May they come unite. When Jesus Christ is, the, is, the, is leading his own children into battle, in the, they're not fit to unite again. Ah, ah. What's it cause quarrel? They're not fit talker. They couldn't place it. This one fight. You see? Verse 23. Please, let's read this. Verse 23. 23, yes. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Marcia, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. You see, they, two of them begin to fight the third one. When they finish that third one, the two were, were being were friends before, they begin to destroy themselves. All of them clear themselves. Nothing remained, no one remained. Make we they hear the word of God, because God will confirm 
the word of his servant. He will perform the counsel of his messenger. When the messenger delivers the message as God has said, it will be so. Nothing can stop it. Praise God. So, when we, when we think that we know this scripture, we must ask the Holy Spirit to help us, to show us how to use the scripture, how to apply it, how to attack Satan, how to deal with Satan. He said it, uh, it is a good thing, it is wise to win souls. But how do you win souls if you are not wise in the skill of using the word of God? It is wise to win souls, witnessing, evangelism. The sword of, but the sword of spirit must be on the forefront as an offensive weapon of attack against Satan, no, not people, no. People go want to, 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 to fight you because you came to, to witness to them. But be careful, may they not drag you into what you not come do. They will throw many questions at you. If you are not skillful in the use of the sword, to quote the right scripture at the right time and correctly explain it, you might fall into their trap. If we look at Psalm, Psalm 73, Verse 2. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. You see, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. He nearly slip. The ground comes slippery for her. Whereas not being God makes slippery ground for, and for the wicked. He didn't know what he was doing again. In mind confused. He was frustrated. Why, why, why? Too many whys, too many hows. He didn't know how to answer the question. So we must exhibit steadfastness in this battle. It is a noble cause we are fighting. The, the, the battle is not ours, it is the Lord's battle. Think of somebody who is in an armored tanker. Let's look at Colossians. I think we know it in the armored tanker. Tanker, where soldiers go there inside, you go cover them, finish, then go only put leaves on top. You're not gonna know whether a person did. In this book of Colossians, chapter three, verse three. Colossians three, yes. verse three. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Our lives are hidden with Christ inside God. We not the, not the we, not the we they fight. Now God, now in day. Now God, now in be that uh, armored tanker. Now God, now Jesus Christ. Once we day inside Christ, we not go worry again because all the arrows fell on Jesus, fell on that armored tanker. That is the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now we're going to look at prayer. Jesus fought with prayer and conquered with prayer. Prayer is the master key. It's not master's key. Not be the key of the master. When you say master's key, it means the key of the master, Jesus. No. It is the key, the master key where they open every door. Jesus wants us to have the master key as he has it. Praise God. So, the place of prayer, as the sword is a weapon, so also is prayer. Prayer is not part of the whole armor of God, but it is an armor. It is a, it is a weapon. In fact, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in great detail about prayer. Let's look at uh, that Ephesians 6. Let's read verse 18. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Uh -huh. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watch ye thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You see, all, all, all kept repeating itself. Praying always with all prayer and supplication 
in the spirit. We'll talk about that. How do you pray in the spirit? And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Paul asks this important weapon of praying always. The prominence of prayer is seen in the repeated emphasis on all prayer, all supplication in the spirit, all perseverance for all saints. What does it mean to pray in the spirit with all perseverance for all saints? So pray in the spirit means with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. When you they pray, don't just rattle, begin to talk. You pray, you listen to God, hear God. When you have said all that is in your mind, stay there and hear what God will tell you. He speaks. He's the living God. So he will tell you, pray about this matter. Maybe that matter was not even on your prayer uh, uh, list. Then you go just put them into your heart. You go see, see now another matter you did pray about. For all saints, it may be another saint that God reminds you of prayer about this matter. So it is the Spirit of God that guides us into right prayer. While we continue to stand firm on those shoes, remember those shoes, believers must also pray and keep alert. God has not left us defenseless in our battle against the ancient foe, the dragon. We must pray always. Isaiah 62, Isaiah 62, verse 7. Isaiah 62, verse 7. And give him no rest. Till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Don't you see? Jesus, you go pray. When he did pray for the garden of, the, of, of uh, agony, when he was agonizing in the garden, you go pray. You go ask God, for like make you take this cup from me. You go listen, God not talk. You go go wake up with three brothers with the Join up. Then they sleep. Ah, now this one are they. All right, get up, make una pray. You go go back. Pray and not be just one thing where you go. Just, I don't pray. You go continue. You go give God no rest till that matter becomes a matter for which you come and give thanks and praises to God. Praise God. As long as you keep praying, prayer continues to ignite your faith. Our faith. Without prayer, go they die, go they quench. But as you keep praying, you go they wake up. God go they help us. We go they, the, 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 the faith go they wake up. Faith will stay alive. Prayer keeps faith alive. Give him no rest. Not tired. As long as you're not tired. God himself not tired. So keep, keep at it. Not say, I, I don't pray, I don't pray, I don't pray. I prayed about the matter this whole week. You never do. If you never get answer, continue. Praise God. So prayer is often neglected. People will say, what in the what in prayer go do? If they walk, if they walk, praise God. It is a neglected weapon against the devil. It works. But in many critical moments, Jesus prepared himself through prayer. The agony in the garden. Let's look at Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. We shall read from 36 to 46. 36 to verse, 46. Verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it were possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, let not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh 
unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again and the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciple, and said unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Praise the Lord. You see, if you look at that first one, that first prayer in verse 39, he ended it, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. He surrendered. We must learn to surrender. Jesus, if not your will, let it be. I'm not going to change your will, can I? No, I'm not going to fit. Let it be. Help me to receive it. That's all. That's all. Once you've surrendered, the rest now God gets them. You can, we can do nothing without Jesus Christ. Nothing. Surrender. Because now he creates us, now he gets us. Praise the Lord. So, the next one when he pray, verse 42. You see, he, mo he moved a little. He, he, he said, if this cup, oh my father, oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. He don't surrender. Don't argue with God. You go fit argue with God. Those where they are, we argue with God since then, where then they? May God help us to surrender absolutely. He will help us. We don't have power to do it, but his grace will help us. His grace will be sufficient. Praise the Lord. You see, I'm, if they move, the prayer, they move. The spirit of God, they help them. If they move. You see, he said, let thy will be done. If, if it be say, now this cup not go pass from me, except I drink it. Oh, that. I surrender. Let your will be done. Praise God. So by the time he, he the third time, he prayed this, this third time, saying the same words. But we know that even though it is the same words, he has totally surrendered by the third time. It's finished. Say, my father, do your will. Because your will is good, your will is, is perfect, your will is acceptable. Who will be the person who will not accept your will? Your will is good, perfect, and acceptable. I accept it. That's what he must have said. There's no need repeating it. Praise the Lord. That is the battle of prayer. And it works. He will help us. He will see us through. When we battle in prayer, don't argue with God. Don't be fearful. He's equal to the task. His strength. He said his grace will always be sufficient. Waiting with the fear. Waiting never happened for worlds before. Is there anything? Is there anything new under the sun? Ah, if it is God's will, it must, it must come to pass. There's nothing we can do about it. That's all. Praise the Lord. So prayer is important, but we mustn't argue with God. Hebrews, Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5, verse Hebrews, 7. Hebrews 5, verse seven. 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, I was heard in that he feared. He feared God. Jesus feared God. When he had prayed in this garden, agony in the garden, when he had prayed with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, 
He said, you not go, I'm not going to remove this death, this cup. You have to drink it, my son. It is for your good and for the good of the world that you have come to save. It is, the, it is for this purpose that you were made manifest, that you will destroy the works of the devil. If you, if you fail in this purpose, what will happen? Go. I will help you. My grace will be sufficient. And he was heard in that he feared. Because he feared God, his prayer was heard. He feared God. First, when not fear God, you go there, you go, you go there, you go there, stop and they go. But in each prayer, he was surrendering the more. Say, Jesus, say, Father in heaven, now you get me. Now you get me. Let your will be done in my life. Finish. When God, see, say, he feared God, God heard his prayer. And everything passed like in the twinkle of an eye. It was as if nothing had happened. So we must pray for strength to resist evil, to actively battle against it. We need it. We need that strength as the Holy Spirit gave Jesus strength. The Syrophoenician woman, the woman that was Greek, mixture of Greek and Syria, where in Peking they seek for house, where he hear about Jesus, where he can come meet Jesus. Let's see how she prayed. Mark 7. How did she pray? Mark 7. Mark 7. Seven, twenty-five, twenty-five. Verse twenty-five. For a certain woman, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. To thirty. The woman was a a Greek, Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast for the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it into the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Oh, I be dog. I agree. But help me. Save me. Dogs, they eat the, the small one when they fall under the table. I beg. Now that one I ask for. Oh, Jesus said, this is faith indeed. This is wonderful. For this saying, go, it is well with your daughter. Many of us know the beer. Ah, now me then talk to you like that. Now me then tell this. Now me that. Ah, Jesus, help us. The woman never hear gospel. He not know anything about the Bible. He not know anything by, for, from any, he not know anything. Then call him dog. You know, vex come out. Sit down there. He say, fine, I'm ready. I know, I know that I'm a dog. I'm willing. The thing with dog they get, give me. And that one I asked for. Hey, Jesus had no choice than to help her, to heal her daughter. Sometimes we go to pray. Satan will come attack us. You've been don't believe. Oh. You've been don't accept. Oh. Satan will do another thing. We go make you say, no, I cannot take it. No, 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 no. I can't. I can't. Why? Ah. Waiting, who are you? Who are me? Who, who, who am I? <laughs> Praise God. Who am I, Re? <laughs> who are we? Nothing, son, son. Now God just pity us, create us. I mean, are we create ourselves? No. I mean, that picking where you they pray for. Now, now you create him. Now you, now be God create him. Now be God go fit, save him. This woman. Jesus say, it is, it is well for this, he, tell, he, talk, he say for this saying, wait till we they talk, may God deliver us from sin in Jesus' name. Hmm. Let's look at Mark 9. Mark. Another man, 
Another nine. prayer. Where this person pray? 20. Mark 9. 20. Mark 9, verse 20. To 27. And they brought him, and they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit heard him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it had cast him into the fire, and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do, thy, do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out, and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my own belief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore, and came out of him, and he was as one dead, in so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. And Praise the Lord! Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. Out of the dead, he came back to life. Satan thought he could just kill him there and disgrace the gospel. Enough fit. Enough fit. The father was begging. He don't already beg the disciples. They said, they're not fit. He not let them do. Then do, 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 he not work. When Jesus come, he go meet him. He said, if thou canst do anything... Have compassion on us and help us. I don't know whether you go fit do anything, but if you go fit do anything at all, have compassion on us. You know nothing at the God of mercy and compassion. Now he come meet. If you can do anything, oh, Jesus look and say, you don't know who you they talk to. The thing to do is for you to believe. Do you believe? Say, my father. I don't know whether I believe. I don't know whether I not believe. I don't know what to be belief. I don't know what to be unbelief. Just help us. Have compassion and help us. That's all. Ah, he insisted. He said, I still they pray. I don't know what to be waiting. I don't know anything. Have mercy. Now your mercy now they beg you. So, now, so he can't be, he can't, the, the picking can't well. Praise God. That's what God they do. That's what God they answer our prayer. We must insist, cry, believe. He says, to, to him that believeth, all things are what? Possible. Oh, may God give us faith in Jesus' name. May God help us to believe. Many people neglect the place of prayer because pray, prayer is a uh, waiting person, waiting, 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 go if do. We must be spiritually balanced in prayer, in this battle. Some people can quote correctly the Bible, yet in the battle they become useless, while some others know the truth, but no life behind it. Why is this so? This happens when we neglect the, the place of prayer, when we are not steadfast in prayer. You know, you know the scripture, but when the battle comes, you know, go fit fight. You don't weak finish. You they fear. There's another group where we say that they spend hours in prayer, yet they are defeated in battle because they have neglected the other part of the whole armor of God, especially the girdle of truth. If you neglect that part, you pray and not go work. An example, a very short example, is the doctrine of separation. For example, there's a snake around your body. You are praying. You know the snake is there. But you refuse to separate yourself from that snake. Let's quickly look at Acts 28, towards the end of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles 28. 28. This thing happened to, to Paul. 
Acts 28, 3, verse 3 and verse 5. Acts 28, verse 3. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Verse 5. <laughs> and he shot off the shook. beast. And he shoot off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Praise the Lord. You say you didn't see what happened. They have just escaped from the sea. The, their ship nearly scattered. In fact, it scattered. They just managed to land somewhere. So, the first thing now to go and look for firewood, cold, everybody, they shiver. Paul, of all people where they dealt, Paul, where they take prayer, they support the journey. Nine snake, now firewood, you just go gather. Snake come out of the firewood, round the hand. Nine, Paul, look up. The native people go, they say, ah, this man, he just escaped from the sea. Now another one, he comes in, a bad man. He go soon die himself. If this snake just bite him, now died on that. But Paul's mind was not shaking. Praise God. God go help us. He go give us such a mind and such a character. He just shook the thing out of his. He didn't pray. No prayer. He shook it out of his hand. Separated himself from that creature. Wicked creature. And he was saved. Many of us, we know this thing, this person or this thing or this situation. If I'm not separate from this situation, it will affect my prayer. But we, we know they feet separate. Now God go down for us in Jesus' name. God in heaven will help us to separate. He will help us. Paul, he go help us. That is how. If people don't believe in, this, in the doctrine of separation or do not understand the doctrine, they will not receive victory. May we receive victory, complete and total victory in the name of Jesus. So what we need is to give time to prayer. We need obedience to the truth the girdle of truth, we need it to obey. We need to separate from the enemies so that Jesus will see, say, our hands are free. No, not in the tie, our hand. May God help us in Jesus' name. We want to quickly look at the last part, which is the three parts, victory. Victory. Now, victory, now we all want to be not be victory. Now, victory. But there are three parts to this victory where God wants to give us. Where they give us, they don't give us. Some is still they give us till the final victory. The victory of salvation. How person they get that one? When a child of God that is born again of this word of truth and of the spirit of Christ receives this salvation. The victory of salvation is already accomplished. It gives us victory over the guilt and condemnation of sin. Let's look at Romans 8. Romans 8, 1 to 3. Or maybe we should read Two and three first. Two and three, and then we come to read one. Romans 8, verse 1. Sorry, verses 2 and 3, before we read one. Okay, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemn sin in flesh. Now, verse 8, for this thing that Christ has done, yes, verse, verse 1, sorry. Verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because of what God has done, and Christ has done for us, there will be no more condemnation 
Once we have given our hearts and lives to Jesus, we accept the word of truth and we receive the spirit of Christ. This victory is accomplished. When Jesus died on the cross, he died in our place. He paid fully the debt of the wages of our sin by his death. It's finished. This victory of salvation is absolute, it's complete, it's irreversible. Unless we go back, use our hand to put, to willfully fall into sin. Otherwise, nothing can take it from us. And when we do sin, commit sin willfully, that's what uh, Hebrews 10 is telling us. Hebrews 10. Let's quickly. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. 26. Verse 26. To th 31. Yes. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, we shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sorra punishment, suppose ye. Shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing? and had done despite unto the spirit of grace. You see, if we sin willfully, who want to do sacrifice for you again now? Jesus will go back again to the cross. Eh? He will go again to the cross, go die again for that sin where you commit willfully, where me commit willfully. No, we must not try it. It's not, it is not acceptable at all. It is bad. It is wrong. That is why the Bible wants us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We must fear God. We must fear God. God is to be feared. He's the almighty Lord. There's none beside him. There's none above him. We just have to fear him. The whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Why won't we fear God? Some people don't fear God. And that's why they enter into trouble, serious trouble. Philippians 2, 12. Philippians. Philippians 2, verse 12. Philippians 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. He said, don't do it because I'm, I'm present. To. When are not they? Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Don't, don't do eye service so. <laughs> because uh, Paul, they're around. Everybody, go, they do. Go, they, no, don't do that. When I'm not here, I want to hear good reports. Say, una de, una de fear God. Work out your... Who not fear God? Uh, person who not fear God is in trouble. In big trouble. How do we fear God? How do we show that we fear God? When temptation comes, you do not yield to temptation. That song where we sing every time, I think it's 698 in Sankey, yield not to temptation. For yielding is sin already. You never commit the sin, but you are yielding. You are, you are enticed. Your throats, they enter that sin. You don't commit the sin finish. Satan must come to tempt. His name is the tempter. If we don't know, say, Naim be the tempter. When he went to tempt Jesus, the Bible described him as the tempter. He has no other work now to tempt people now in day. So, if we know, if we, if, we, if we yield to temptation at all, we are falling. Yielding is sin. From one victory, we will have another victory. Take your eye, come out for that thing. Take your mind, come out. Not do am. Not even look am. Not even think about it. Jesus will help us in Jesus' name. Another victory that we all, we they get, now God, they still, they help us, 
It lies in our power to overcome sin. It's a continuous victory as we run this race. In our power to overcome Satan's wiles and temptations. To entice us. He wants to entice us by all means and at all costs. Satan will always come to entice us into sin, to make us commit sin. That's why Jesus always talks about he that overcometh, he that overcometh, he that overcometh in the book of Revelations. Where he emphasized overcoming sin and Satan's temptations as often as they come. Not say, I first overcome yesterday. I beg today, oh, I beg. Ah, I knew how it would be. God, go help me. And you are doing nothing about it. And you are falling. It's a sin already. Praise the Lord. Many times, even most times, we experience defeat instead of victory. And this makes us to lose the assurance. When we were in the last session, we were told how Satan makes us feel as if we have not, we have, you have lost your salvation, you are not even saved. It is all these things that make us. Then when Satan would attempt, we, not, we go come lose the joy of salvation when we lose the assurance, when we, we fall into sin. Or into temptation even. It is one of his tricks. Well, but if we mourn and break down and cry before God with godly sorrow, Judas not cry. The Bible say he cry. He repents. Not be, not be cry be that one. The cry where we go cry. Now godly sorrow. Godly sorrow brings repentance. Worldly sorrow now my life be this. Now, maybe this. You be sorry for yourself. Don't be sorrow, be that. He repented. But he didn't fully repent. Yes, he went and returned the money. But he not sorry, he said, the thing where I do to God, the thing where I do to my master. Now, that one go pain us pass. Not be the thing where it happened to himself, no. That is worldly sorrow. So, we, if we cry, godly sorrow, God see him, say, ah, this thing where we do, it pain us, he go forgive us. Continuous victory depends on our relationship with Christ. If you fall into sin, don't cover it, oh, not hide them. Confess it to Jesus as you journey in this Christian race. Praise God. 1 John 1 1, 8 to 9. 1 John 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, if we confess, he is faithful and just to forgive us. There's no sin. Where to be the sin where, we never, where Jesus never forgive? Where Jesus never see? Certain, certain, Peter deny him, Master. Is that not enough for him to, to get wild at him, mad at him? But he forgave him. He's ready to forgive us. Satan going to tell us, this is your sin. It's too big. It's too big. You don't go feel it. No, for, nobody can forgive you this one. He will forgive us. That's why he came. That's why he suffered and bled and died on the cross for our sake. Praise God. So he will forgive us. Another assurance we have is that Christ will always make a way of escape from every temptation. He will. 1 Corinthians 10. He will make a way. 1 Corinthians 10. 10. Verse 13. Verse 13. There had no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? But will with the temptation also make a way of to escape that ye may be able to bear they it. They think of us, they worry for us, they think of us as the temptation they come, they make way how we go escape. Ah, this Jesus, this God, how we go fit thank him? 
He will, with the temptation, make a way to escape that we may be able to bear it. He knows our strength. He knows that we don't even get strength at all. Ah, he will have mercy on us. Some of us know they fear God because we think, say, let's look at uh, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 8. When we fear God, we go repent. Ecclesiastes 8. Ecclesiastes 8. It's 11. Verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of men, the son of man is fully set in them to do evil. Because we know they see where God, they, they deal with people instantly, speedily. We go think, say, eh, no, go, no be God, he go have mercy. He go have mercy, go pity in me, he go pity in people. So we don't repent. We don't confess. We just they go as if nothing had happened. It cost Jesus his life. The life, the blood is in the life. The life is in the blood. He shed his blood drop by drop for you and me. So we should fear God. How we not go fear God? Proverbs. If we fear God, we go come out hand for sin. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. Verse 6. Verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Wait, if you if person gets God, we get mercy and truth. You discover by the truth, by his mercy, that this is where I went wrong. Father, have mercy on me. Forgive me. We go to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Uh -uh. He, he don't forgive us sins. Person will give his son to die for us. What did he not go forgive? He go forgive us. But we must break down and mourn and weep and say, I'm not fit to be your son. The prodigal came back, said, I'm not fit. The father took him up, said, not even finish your sentence. Come home. He took him home and gave him a robe better than the one he wanted to. He, he, he thought he could. He, he, he stole away. He didn't know there was a better robe still left in his father's house. There is always a better robe in our father's house for us to replace that one where we stain, where we spoil. He will give us a better robe. Praise God. If we break down, no, if we are sorry. So by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Sin, they come out. But by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. You want to do this evil. Then, you remember, say this God, eh? I fear you. Mm. You don't depart, you're not going to put hand. You're not going to even, you're not going to think come again, not to talk, say you try. Now go, you don't go. I don't go. Jesus, I don't go. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to try. May God help us in Jesus' name. So, every victory we have helped us to win another victory. Once you escape that one, the same way God, that same God will help us to escape the next temptation. Praise God. He will help us when we have victory. Satan wants us to feel you are useless. But if we overcome him, that strength will increase. We go fit to overcome him the next time. Praise God. Then there is a final victory. We don't talk the first victory of salvation. We, it's already prepared before we come. Jesus, don't give us. It is complete, irreversible. Only with our hand, we fit, take, draw the hand of God back. Otherwise, what Christ has done, no man can undo. Praise God. Then the second victory is the continuous victory where we go, they get. If we commit sin, confess it, not hide them. Who do they hide them for? God, we don't see. Before him, all things are naked. Before the God with whom we have to do, he knows, he sees all that we have been doing, all that we have been thinking in our hearts, he knows. So don't hide it. 
come to him, come clean. The last victory, the final victory, is this one that re refers to the complete eradication of evil and of all ungodliness. This can only happen in the second advent when Christ comes to establish his millennial reign. This we already know. When we shall all reign with Christ throughout eternity. That time, Satan, our adversary, and the author of sin, now he starts sin. Nobody know what to be seen until he started it. He will then be banished from our lives forever. Then we will be able to say that the time I have spent for the devil is enough. I now live for Jesus forever. No more. Me and Satan not get connection. I don't know him. He doesn't, I have no business with him. Total separation. It will be bygone forever. This is the final victory. In, uh, as we read it in John, John 14. John 14. Where John it tells us, say. 14. Mm -hmm. John 14. 1 to 3. Verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That where I am, there ye may be also. That's the final victory. We have to be wise, like the wise virgins, to arrive at this point. We have to be wise, like the righteous nation in Isaiah 26, 2, which we know already, we won't read it. The five wise virgins were wise because they had oil in their lamps, they had oil in their vessels. They were watchful. I dare say that their shoes were shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. They were ready. Why did the wise virgins refuse to help the, 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 the foolish virgins. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Verse 8, please. Verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Nine. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell. I'll buy for yourselves. You see, the necessities of salvation, the things that we need for salvation, cannot be borrowed. Why? You have to have personal faith, your own faith. You can't hand it over to your child. You can't help anybody else, a friend or anybody. You have to have repentance over your own sin. You have to have personal holiness. Freedom from sin. You have to have personal service to God and personally, personally prepare for eternal life. So it's not something you can share with somebody or hand over to somebody. God will help us to understand these things so that we don't think that uh, I must give, I must... You, when there's... Help, you see, you see this, this, this salvation, you can't give it to somebody. You can't transfer it. You can't let somebody borrow it from you. It's not, it doesn't work that way. Each person, that's why only all, all that we can do is to pray for such people who don't have so that God himself will give them salvation. So that when Jesus will come in the sky, in the clouds, all of us will have that thing that is necessary, that preparedness for him to help us to be caught up, caught up to meet him in the air. The only one fit help. The only one. He will, he will help us to be caught up to meet him in the air. Very soon he will come. To take his people home, and then we will be caught up to meet him in the air. We will be caught up. 
to meet him in the air. We will be caught up, his blessedness to share. Very soon he will come to take his people home. Caught up to meet him in the air. Praise God. We go pray now. We go stand up to pray. We go tell Jesus to teach us all that he has been teaching us, all that he has been telling us. Make he help us to apply. It's one thing to know. It's another thing to apply this word that he has given us. But he will teach us to apply the sword of the spirit to be more prayerful, effective prayer, factual prayer, prayer that avails much. It will help us to wear the shoes of the gospel of, of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Make it remove fear from our hearts. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you because you are the only one who can transform our lives. Who can make us to be what you want us to be? Who can make us to accept your will? Who can make us to follow as you lead? Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Let us pray that God will deliver us from that desire to tempt God. Jesus did not tempt God when he knew that that's where Satan was going. He said, <laughs> My scriptures have told me that I cannot tempt my God. And Satan left him. Let us pray that God will help us to resist the devil in prayer. Pray with all your heart and believe. You not get belief, you did doubt. In fact, you have unbelief like that man. Tell him to change your unbelief to belief, to strong faith. Help me, O oh Lord, help me. Father, hear this prayer, which we have said in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Amen.